What up, Onary Youth? This is Jay Nettles coming to you from YLAM, Kansas City on this beautiful, sunny day. I'm just kicking it under this nice shaded tree on this beautiful, sunny afternoon. I hope it's not all rainy and murky out there in San Jose. By the way, I love the 408, but y'all got to get that sun back out. But man, I had a good time with you guys. Um, I'm super relaxed, just coming to just give you a quick little shout out. I know my boy Nathan. Do you guys love Nathan? Good man right there. All you men have got out there, man, just be sure to always encourage the leaders and people you guys have in your life that are uh, really leading the way for righteousness, leading the way in the fear of the Lord. Just some serious, serious, amazing guys you have over there. But uh, Nathan asked me if I'd be willing to actually record a, um, a video uh, just about Covenant Brotherhood and I've been thinking about it a lot and I'm like, man, I don't really know what to say in that regard. But I think um, the thing I can most encourage you guys about with Covenant Brotherhood, I think would be probably the biggest takeaway I've learned is you don't have to do this thing alone. And you were not created to do this alone. Um, there's something about community, even the scripture. Uh, man Jesus amongst many others said do not forsake the gathering of the brotherhood do not forsake the gathering of coming together with other believers other men and women of God not just men uh, that'd be weird because we are supposed to meet other people and women uh, get married have families all that but my point being is it's it's this beautiful aspect of community and coming together so first thing is I mean you weren't born to do this alone so don't try. Don't, don't, don't expe expect to have an incredible time at the retreat, but then you don't go to church, you don't go to Bible study, you don't have any other believers you connect with at your high school, and literally 30 days later, a month later, you're like, man, I feel so far, I feel so distant, I feel so weak, but you haven't been around the brotherhood. Ding, ding, ding. It might be a sign to you that God's trying to, to give you a clue, like, hey, you need community. Um, so I think the first thing I'd say is you weren't born to do this alone. Don't try to do this in isolation because I'll say this, isolation is the devil's playground and the enemy will have a field day with you. You will not be able to stand a chance trying to face this enemy by yourself. You need your brothers on your right and you need your brothers on your left. In fact, tap your neighbor on your left right now. Be like, yo, you say, yo, what's up neighbor? And be like, yo, I need you. Yeah, 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 you, I need you. And do me a favor, tap your other neighbor, tap him, say, hey, other neighbor, be like, yo, you're my second pick, but you're the man too, I need you in my life. We need each other, we need each other. Look around, your left, your right, your brothers, the leaders, um, you guys were born to do this together. And so that's the first thing I'd say is, man, that's a big point, man, don't do this alone. Do it with each other, do it together. Um, second thing I'd say is, um, I think I shared it at the retreat, but there's something about living in community, living amongst brothers, and having people that you feel confident enough to go to, even in your sin, and even in your failure, and even in your weakness, and you can be confident to be able to go to them, and you know they're not gonna judge you, but they're only gonna call you higher. And to be able to go to them in the spirit of James 5.16 in the Bible, uh, if you guys can write that down, it says to confess your sins to one another that you might be healed. And I find, I find it interesting, the scripture wanted to make it clear, if you confess your sins to him, the Father, he'll forgive you your sins. But if you confess your sins to your brother, the one on the right and the left, you'll actually be healed. I find that really interesting that one of the secrets of the faith is confession of sin amongst your brothers that God could actually bring healing, wholeness, restoration to your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's a powerful statement. And so I found strength in that uh, with my, my, my buddies, one of them, Abe Jin, Sunno Park, and Andy Un. These are my good friends. And these are guys that I go to, and we're all in our early 30s, and we still will come to each other at times in weakness. Uh, at times, if something happens and we find ourselves weak, which we all do, to go to them and say, hey, I need prayer. Hey, I've done this, or I looked at this, or I committed this, and guys, I needed to bring it to the light, and man. And in that moment, those brothers will come around you and, and, and take away and smash every lie of shame, guilt, and condemnation, and they're the voices in your life you want to say, hey, 
Man, let's move forward. The past is the past. Man, Jesus does not remember. Let it go. Man, don't let it dictate your future anymore. Let's move forward in his, in his forgiveness and his grace. And man, today's a new day. Come on, what does the scripture say? That his mercies are new every morning. So man, just finding strength in that. So number one, man, don't isolate yourself. You're not strong enough. You never will be. Come on, we've, we're, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to stand against an enemy that's been doing this thing for over six thousand years. Okay. Um, secondly, confess your sins to one another that you might be healed. Find strength in your brothers. Find strength in your leaders. Find strength amongst each other. And then lastly, I mean, I would just say, you guys are you guys are powerful. It's one thing for one of you to be a man of God and to have giftings and talents that God's given you. That's another thing for three, four, five, six of you to come together. And there's power in that and there's unity in that. Um, the scripture even talks about in Proverbs that iron sharpens iron so another man sharpens another man. Uh, another aspect of that is, you know, the scripture also talks about one man can send a thousand to flight, but two can send 10,000 to flight. And so you keep seeing these patterns of, in the scripture of the power and numbers of when you come together and how we're better together than we are apart. And so just reminding you guys that, that when you guys begin to come together uh, in unity, you begin to see a greater expression of the kingdom of God in your lives. And it's not just about this homie's strength, and it's not just about that guy's strength, but it's about all three of you now coming together and now seeing a fuller picture and a fuller expression of, of God in Onary Youth Ministry, on your high school, in your family, so on and so forth. So hopefully all that made sense, man. At the end of the day, even just to be able to get to see you, you guys to see me, I wanted you to know, keep plowing, keep pushing, keep getting in the word, keep praying, keep confessing sin, keep hungering and thirsting for righteousness, as Matthew 5 says, to, to be ones that hunger after God. And don't give up, keep running this race, keep going out after him and I just want you guys to know I've been bragging about you all over all over this uh, campus and I've been telling everybody every day man those youth at, in, in in San Jose they are wild and God is gonna birth a move of God out of that church and I believe if they have the faith for it it's going to happen and so man I, I know I talked a bit I know I didn't really have a script but I just wanted to share from my heart Jason Nettles man coming to you guys I love you uh, all the way here from Kansas City. I hope to see you guys very soon. And man, I'm praying for you guys. I'll keep in touch on your Facebook group. Man, just keep the faith, keep the heart, and just know that, man, you have another, another brother here in Kansas City praying for you guys on a regular. So, peace.